G'day guys and gal. The element of time travel is a classic sci-fi trope. Entire settings, franchises and plot lines have been developed and exploited over the simple component of moving back and forwards through time. However, Warhammer once again dials things up to 11 and beyond. Not only is there time travel in the setting of 40k, but there is multiple methods using entirely different sciences, magics and rules within the one setting. The way a Necron Chronomancer works with time is incredibly different to how the masters of the warp would. Before we get started, do you remember in that workout video where I said that if HelloFresh was a chick, I'd marry her? And that I really wanted to work with them? Well, guess who just reached out to me? That's right, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Before I tell you what offer and other cool stuff you'll get by using my code, I wanna say that I've been a genuine, full paying customer of HelloFresh for over a year now. Like each of these pages represents two meals that I've eaten. I've consumed so much of this stuff and I attribute it to being one of the main reasons why I'm able to easily maintain my muscle mass, energy and general health. It's great for bodybuilding due to its really high protein content meals, but it also has a great mix of veggies and fruits, so you'll be getting all your macro and micronutrients naturally. The meals are obscenely delicious, the recipe is easy to follow and it doesn't take long at all. I've actually learned how to cook as a genuine skill purely through using HelloFresh. Each meal is conveniently packaged in recyclable material, giving you only what ingredients you need, so thumbs up for the environment. If you don't like one or more of the pre-selected meals for the week, you can just swap them out for a different one, including lower carb or calorie meals. For example, when I was losing weight for a jiu-jitsu tournament, I swapped out the pastas and burgers for leaner, higher protein, lower calorie meals. Now for the juicy bit. Using my link and code below, POGMAJORKILL16, you'll get 16 free meals and three surprise gifts across six different meal boxes. Not to mention some um, cheeky free shipping. It's not often that I promote something that I find to be genuinely life-changing, but hey, today's that day. Cheers to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over each of the methods of time travel within 40k. We will detail how each method works, who can perform it, and how reliable it is. Let's get into it. It's important to note the difference between seeing the past and future and actually being able to travel it. Seems like everyone and their cat can see the flow of time. The Emperor, Eldrad, Magnus, some random Necron mathematicians. Hell, even Eisenhorn got a solid glimpse of the past by accidentally linking his brain to a Chaos Titan. Seeing the past and future isn't cool. You aren't cool, Kairos, you fucking ugly ass bird. Traveling, on the other hand, is fucking dope. So how does one manage it? Well, the first and most obvious method is through the use of the warp. The warp is a fickle thing, a hell-like dimension that defies all rules of space-time and physics. It's reasonably common for ships that travel within the warp to travel back or forward in time. Generally, it's quite minor, a day, maybe a week back or forward, but it can also be years, decades, centuries, or in some rare cases, thousands of years. It's also very random for the most part and can't really be relied on. For example, in the Night Lords Omnibus, the setting takes place around the 41st millennium. However, for the Night Lords, it's only been a few centuries since they fought at the Siege of Terra. The extended periods of time they'd spent within warp-infected areas, such as the Maelstrom and the Eye of Terra, had really messed with their time zone. Maybe that's why the forces of chaos always seem to be mad as hell. They're all really fucking jet-lagged all the time. It also helps explain why so many Chaos characters barely seem to have aged or gotten incredibly bored for 10,000 years. For them, it's only been a handful of centuries. I mean, you'd think that Ahriman would have figured out how to reliably get into the Black Library if he had had 10,000 years to prepare for it. Out of all the warp spaghetti time travel, the majority of cases are people moving forward, not backwards in time. It's not entirely clear why this is the case beyond the fact that if everyone was always going back in time, it would really fuck with the narrative, but it has happened. In old lore, there was an orc who accidentally travelled back in time, and he decided to kill his past self in order to get another copy of his favourite gun. There was no repercussions or paradoxes that occurred. The orc just carried on with his life, now dual wielding his signature weapon. Another example in the lore that I believe is now not canon was when the word bearers went back in time and they were the ones that actually scattered the baby Primarchs. So how reliable is time travel via use of the warp? Not very, obviously. However, it can be done accurately by a few individuals. When Lorgar went on his pilgrimage to discover the nature of chaos, he was guided by a demon prince. 
This Demon Prince took Lorga forward and backwards multiple times. He even met Demon Prince Magnus, despite Magnus being a loyalist at the time. The demon's time travel was accurate and reliable, so whilst it is possible to time travel using the warp, it's incredibly difficult and generally unreliable. As a rule of thumb, if the Emperor wouldn't or couldn't do it, then it's probably not a good idea to try. As I said, the use of the warp isn't the only way to time travel, there's a few much better ways to do it. In Warhammer, there's a bunch of random shit that just doesn't make it to the front pages. One of these things is a magic door that can teleport you to any time and place in the galaxy. Wanna go see the Emperor's birth? No worries. Wanna go see the end of the galaxy? No worries. Wanna tell Ukraine not to give up their nuclear weapons at the Budapest Denuclearization Summit of 1994 so that it doesn't cost a fucking arm and a leg to fill up a car? No worries. This door is awesome. It existed on an ice world, hidden beneath the frozen oceans in a sentient underwater house that walked around. It had an entire cult of people who dedicated their lives to circle jerking over it. The door literally had sentience, and it actually got a kick out of fucking with people. When Inquisitor Ravenor and his merry band of skilled individuals with shitty lives encountered it, they were able to enter it with the help of one of the cultists using a magic key. It took them to various times and places in the future, with them even encountering the Tyranids centuries before the first official High Fleet would enter the Milky Way. The door also took them back in time hundreds of years, which caused a bit of an awkward situation when they were captured by the Imperium, as Ravenor wasn't technically born yet, hence wasn't an Inquisitor at the time so they couldn't verify if he was talking shit or not. Eventually he is freed after convincing one of the guardsmen he is from the future. Tragically, as this is Warhammer, when Ravenor looks back on the records of his capture, it shows that the guardsman that helped him was captured and executed for treason. Whilst the door does have its own sentience and even a sense of humour, for example when Ravenor requested it take him to water so he could drink, it ended up dumping him in the middle of a rainy thunderstorm, it can however be bent to your will. A powerful enough psyker may force the door to take them wherever they want to go whenever they want to go there. The door can also be used to create a portal directly to the warp, which is how Ravenor was able to defeat the mother chungus of all demons. You can also give the door preset instructions for the next people to visit. For example, if you wanted to lead someone to a trap, you could instruct the door that the next person to open it will be dropped off on a planet that is currently under attack by Dark Eldar Raiders. All in all, the door is an incredibly powerful and reliable tool for time travel, as long as you're a powerful enough psyker to operate it properly. Speaking of Inquisitors, there was actually a sub-faction of the Inquisition dedicated entirely to the concept of time travel. The Auto Kronos, as it was called, was formed to monitor the effects of time travel, how to perform it and the consequences of it, among other things. But then one day they completely vanished. It hasn't said why they vanished, but even a Drongo dickhead in Frankston could put two and two together and assume they figured out time travel and then kind of fucked it up. This is further supported by the fact that the Order has re-emerged in the current setting, either been reformed, or more likely, popping out of their time machine. Whatever method they use for time travel is probably similar to how the Warp's time travel works, judging by the fact that they were gone for so long without leaving a note. Moving away from the magic -y time travel, we have the Necron Chronomancers who time travel using science. Well, I mean it's science that doesn't exist and it's basically magic, but fuck it, science. Unlike warp time travel, Necron time travel is accurate and deliberate. Necron Chronomancers are a special type of Necron that are able to manipulate time backwards and forwards. Generally, they are limited to a small handful of short jumps before they have to recharge. However, Orokin the Diviner has surpassed this, and is granted basically unlimited time travel. He's also a bit of a narcissist, as most Necrons are, hence whenever one of his future predictions is proven wrong, he'll travel back in time to make sure it ends up being right. He's also very petty, hence when he was in a Necron court for stealing from Trezin, he would rewind time every time the court case wasn't panning out in his favour. The Necron time travel doesn't seem to be optimised for long term travel, nor can it be used as a teleporter. The Necron simply rewinds or fast forwards their own life. It's also not limitless in power. When Orokin got buried beneath a mountain of rubble, he had to claw his way out. Each time a cave-in was about to crush and kill him, which was bad as his reanimation protocol wasn't online, he would quickly rewind time by a few minutes hours or even days and try and plot out a new path. In real time, it took him a couple centuries to escape, but for himself, it was 2000 years of agonizing trial and error before he had made it. If his time travel was limitless and overpowered, he would have just been able to rewind time before he got crushed. 
Now for a bit of an interesting case. As we know, the Dark Age of Technology was mankind's peak, an era of technological innovation, invention, and god-tier science, eventually brought to an end by a robotic uprising and a bunch of space elves having a galactic blood orgy. However, before it ended, a scientist from the Dark Age successfully time-traveled to the future to see what awaited humanity. What awaited was the Imperium, which was very bad for him. The first planet he visited, he was burnt to death as a heretic. His ship, however, was a fully functioning AI, a man of iron, from the Dark Age of Technology. It was obscenely powerful and likely capable of beating nearly any ship in the galaxy. It solo tore apart an Astartes fleet, and when it was boarded, it uploaded a virus to the Space Marines' armor which locked them in place. From there, it destroyed them one by one, whilst it tortured and killed a tech priest. Yeah, ship wasn't too happy about losing its pilot. From there, the ship left the galaxy behind. Just goes to show how ridiculously powerful humanity was during the Dark Age of Technology, if one exploration ship was able to do so much damage. Not to mention they built what seemed to be like a reliable time machine. From these examples, what seems to be the fundamental rules of time travel in 40k? The setting seems to try to avoid the butterfly effect, which I can't really blame them for. That would make everything way too fucky. It seems as if all travels to the future were always going to occur, hence the timeline accounted for them. The timeline also tries to accommodate all travels to the past, however sometimes it can't, such as when the orc killed its past self. However, killing his past self did not seem to have much of a ripple effect. It almost seems as if it follows alongside the time travel rules of the MCU, except instead of creating new timelines, it just tries its best to fit everything as neat as possible in the one timeline. Games Workshop seems to actively avoid delving too deep into the topic, only using time travel sparingly as a bit of sparkle to the lore, instead of trying to create a narrative based around a time heist. I for one appreciate this. 40 years of narrative is already confusing enough without the need for some X-Men tier time travel fuckery. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of cheeky anti, including this new piece celebrating strong women for International Women's Day. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more spaghetti content. Join the Discord for more memes, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.